good time roll. Oh, let the good time roll. We don't care if you're young or old. Get together, let the good times roll. Right folks, um, where do we start? It's now May 2013, it's been a while, it's been about six months since I got back. Um, yeah, completely different. Really about the last two weeks everything has changed. Um, we've now got Delta on board, Delta Energy Services. Uh, they've come on as principal sponsor and um, they've basically revived everything, revived the whole dream. I can't thank Martin and Bob enough actually. Um, cheers lads. Basically in five days time, in fact no, what are we, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so three days time I'm setting off again. Funnily enough leaving out Africa and the Middle East this time. Uh, but I'm basically going to be picking up the trip where I would have been, I'll be about a month behind, maybe six weeks behind. Um, but yeah, going to be setting off, going up, doing a good tour of Scotland, uh, coming back down, crossing to Europe, making my way up into Norway, up to the Arctic Circle at Nordcap, then back down through Eastern Europe to Romania, and then I'm heading up to Moscow and straight out, heading for Vladivostok, stopping in Mongolia along the way. Um, and then, yeah, just as before really, uh, Japan, uh, South Korea, shipping over China at the moment because I can't get the visa just now, it may change. Uh, and then India and make, work my way right down through the uh, the Orient, all the way down to Oz, New Zealand, South America, Central America, States, Canada, just like before basically. So yeah, still looking at coming back July next year, early July. We've got Chutney's wedding on the 18th of July, so I've got to be back for that. And um, Nikki will kill me if I'm any longer, I think. Um, what can I say? Yeah, uh, it has been a roller coaster, a real roller coaster. Um, I think I was as down as I've ever been when I got back in November. You can see that from the videos. Uh, it just nosedived so quick. Things got really bad in Africa, and uh, I'm glad I came back. But uh, I've got to finish this trip. Anyone that knows me knows that I've got to finish this trip. So this is it. I'm heading off. I won't be back till it's done, and. Uh, you know, if the last couple of months is anything to go by, there's going to be quite a lot of drama with the, with the beast. I'm um, six days away from leaving to ride a motorbike around the world, and that motorbike currently has no arse <laughs> and no wiring loop. Uh, yeah, it's all going well. Oh, and I've got no visa for Russia and no visa for Mongolia so far. Jolly good. After another subframe issue, we had some wiring problems, uh, missing and relay. What should have been an hour and a half job ended up taking about nine and a half hours. But my mate Dave here and my mate Jimbo, they came to the rescue uh, and after a day or two of uh, fiddling about, we soon got the beast back up on the road, thankfully. Right, morning folks, uh, take two. It's the uh, 9th of May, uh, 2014, and I'm having another crack at it. Uh, gonna leave here, heading off uh, up to Scotland today for a three day tour around Scotland with the CBR 1000.co.uk lads. And if this looks familiar, this is where I started the last time. So, everyone that came along the last time, thanks very much, guys. I didn't want to do the big send off today because uh, we've done that. We'll wait till I get back. I just want to introduce you. This is Martin McDonald. Hi, Bruce. How are you Martin's from uh, Delta. Delta Energy Services. Yeah, Delta Energy Services is a principal sponsor for 2.1. Uh, without Delta, this simply wouldn't be happening. So uh, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart <laughs> for uh, getting the dream back up and running. Um, what I'm going to be doing is Delta has a, a global uh, presence, so I'm going to be visiting all the global headquarters along the trip. So I'll be uh, visiting the one in Coventry, there's uh, one in St uh, Stavanger. Norway, uh, Perth in Australia, uh, and Houston over in the States, uh, definitely, and there's one or two others that I might be visiting along the way. So uh, as we go, we'll progress it, and um, as normal, you can follow everything on the website, 
and I appreciate all the uh, support that comes through the social media. So keep that coming on Facebook and Twitter. All right. All right. Wish you the best of luck, mate. Thanks Thanks the best of luck. Morning, folks. I am uh, about 150 miles. About 150 miles from Hamburg. It is day eight. Uh, yeah, been on the road for eight days now. It's um, it's incredible. I, I can't emphasise how different this feels. Just, um, I know I'm going to do this. By hook or by crook, I know I'm going to do it. But it's been great so far. Started off started off at the Cenotaph, met with Martin uh, from Delta Energy Services. From there, headed up north, uh, met up with uh, Ray Walton um, at Squires Calf, he's a good mate of mine. Uh, and then from there, from there I went up to Darlington and met up with David uh, Isles, who's the brother of Bob Isles, who is the owner of Delta. Um, David was my connection with the Lymphona Association, they're the fifth charity that have now come on board, so check them out if you wouldn't mind. And then from there I headed up to Hoyk. I met up with the lads from the 1000rr.co.uk biker forum. From there we had an incredible weekend around Scotland, it really was amazing, I loved every second of it. All in the rain unfortunately, but it, it didn't dampen spirits at all. Right, well uh, Dave's had a bit of a malfunction with his lid this morning, it wasn't my fault at all. Um, but from now on he will now be known as children in need. <laughs> Brilliant. Gaffer tape. Solution to all men's problems. And uh, it certainly didn't slow us down. start of the, uh, the trip. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So from there I left the guys on the Monday and I headed down and I stopped at Bridgestone and Delta in uh, Coventry and Warwick just for some PR shots and then from there I made my way eventually to Land's End. <laughs> And then from Land's End back to London, where I was supposed to pick up the Russian visa. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of issues with the Russian visa. I still don't have it. Uh, they sent the wrong forms originally. You have to get an invitation, a letter of invitation. They sent the wrong forms originally. Uh, and now, apparently, there's changes afoot with how the embassy is dealing with things. So, still don't know how and when I'm going to get the Russian visa. But hey, I'm on the road. Life is good. We we'll play it by ear. Fluid, I believe, is the term. It's a fluid plan. So anyway, um, from London, I met up with Nikki. Had one last little coffee with her and a chat, which was lovely. And uh, went and spent the night with my mate uh, Russ in Leatherhead. And the next day, headed across the Channel to France. Uh, and from France, I've gone through Belgium um, into the Netherlands. Last night, I stayed in Amsterdam with uh, Joe Swain, who's a friend of Born Freeze. Um, so thank you very much Joe for putting me up last night and showing me the sights of Amsterdam. Cracking city, well worth popping to see if you haven't been. And uh, I'm not just talking about the red light this so. Running free, you know how to feel Blossom in the tree 
Uh, from there, today I've basically just been sitting on the road all day heading for Hamburg. Um, Netherlands, lovely place, but not really much of a biker's mecca to be honest with you. The, the roads are pretty flat, pretty straight, um, and there's really not many twists and turns. However, I've just crossed into Germany and uh, what a difference. Straight away you're into forests. Uh, you start getting a bit of twists and turns and you can see the hills on the horizon so uh, I'm looking forward to um, the rest of the journey to Hamburg. Uh, I haven't got a GoPro, the battery's gone um, so I will charge that up tonight. Um, try and find a campsite tonight or a hotel, we'll see. Um, I could do with a bit of a wash actually, I could do with a wash of a few things. Um, yeah, that's us, keep it posted. Right folks, I'm in Denmark. Uh, I'm in a place called Middelfart, believe it or not. Um, just stopped off at TG Motor Centre, a uh, bike shop I found online to get some chain lube. Uh, the place was shut when I arrived, but thankfully the bloke was just leaving and he let me in to get some chain lube. So thank you very much if you're watching this. Uh, plan today really, I've been on the back roads, but um, not too much in Denmark really to be honest with you for the biker, not that I've seen, that's only one tiny little portion that I've done but there's not really been anything to, to speak about to be honest with you, very straight roads for the vast majority of the time and, and low speed limits. Um, I'm going to jump on the motorway because I've got a lot of miles to, to meet up, about almost 300 miles to go to Halmstad in Sweden uh, and I'm going to be staying at a campsite there tonight, that's the plan. Um, yeah, about three and a half, four hours away, I think. So, yeah, that'll be me. Nothing really to talk of as yet. Still enjoying it, loving it, and uh, can't wait for Norway. All right, guys, see you later. I can't come to Sweden and not get a picture of IKEA. We bit of flag envy going on. One side, Sweden, and on the other, Norway. Some life, eh? Arrived in Oslo that evening. It was a gorgeous summer's night, so I decided to take a wander through the town. The Royal Palace sits atop a large mound next to the park and has a beautiful view down the main street, Carl Johann's Gate. Oslo's full of historical museums, art centres, shops. There's a real thriving street atmosphere. Whilst wandering the city, I got a phone call from Una Larsen. Una turns out to be the epicentre of biking in Norway. And what and who she doesn't know aren't worth knowing. Una told me that her boyfriend, Peter Muir, was at a regular bike meet at Carl Johan's Gate. So I went back, met Peter and his mate Roger, and we had a good evening chatting about bikes. The lads even told me about the Arctic Circle Raceway. And you guessed it, Una even knew somebody who could organise a couple of laps. I love this place. Couldn't put it better myself. After an unintentional early morning alarm clock, I was soon back on the road heading across the mountains to Stavanger.
Well, folks, I, I've got to say, I'm, uh, I think I'm in love with this place. Norway is fantastic so far, and this is just the south. I've still got 2,000, 2,500 miles to go yet, all the way up the west and up the north, and that's where the great scenery and roads are. You've got to come over here, folks. I mean, you have got to come over here and just see this place. It's absolutely incredible. Giving Scotland a run for its money, I would say. I know. <laughs> about 20 minutes down the road, 20 minutes further west, maybe half hour further west from where I was that last time. Um, and uh, look at the place now, there's a lake, you can see out here, massive, no idea what the name is, but about 812 metres above sea level according to the sat nav, uh, and it's still iced over, it's just starting to thaw, you can just see at the edges here, but it's starting to um, thaw out, and uh, you can see further on, Back towards Oslo, there's big um, rivers in flood in spades at the moment. They're all this, all this fuel and everything. It's all thawing out and firing on down to the sea. Now this is what I need in northern Russia. I need all that melted and gone by the time I hit eastern sort of Siberia, uh, Mongolia, that sort of neck of the woods. Because if it's not, then it's still coming, it's still flooding when I get there. Well, it's going to put a, a hold on things for a while because there's no way I'm getting through Mongolia when it's wet. Uh, so, fingers crossed, let's hope all this is cleared by then. Should do. Just be a man, gotta do what you can now. I just can't believe what she's put you through. I just can't. My first stop in Stavanger was Delta HQ to meet Ole Bang, who was organising some press coverage. Quentin Ross and his daughters even turned up to say hello and to see the bike. They even brought beer. God, I love this country. Right, pop the beast into uh, Biker Street, as you can see behind me. Um, massive, big dealership here in Stavanger. They've got everything inside, every mate you can think of. Uh, the place is rammed full of bikes, and the backyard is rammed as well with customers' bikes, which is a good thing. Um, cracking service so far, it's been very polite, very helpful. Managed to squeeze me in short notice, and they're going to do a full service on the beast. We'll get her ready for uh, what lies ahead. I'm just going to pop into town now and do a bit of sightseeing. Right, well, I spent a few hours this morning wandering around Stavanger while I was waiting for the bike to be serviced. And uh, I've got to say, I like the place. I really do like the place. You know, I grew up in the northeast of Scotland. I was born there because my family came with the oil. And so I've kind of grown up hearing about Stavanger. And in my head, I had, I had it that it was some sort of bustling metropolis. Um, and I get here and it's, it's a real homely city. It's not that big, uh, but it's lovely. It's really, really nice. Um, you can tell, you know, the place has thrived on the oil. It's hellish expensive, but um, it's a nice place. It's a clean city, the people are really nice. It's uh, very multicultural, I've got to say, it's, it's, it's full. Um, there's everybody here, you know, you, there's Chinese, there's a lot of South Americans, I've noticed actually, in Norway there's a lot of South Americans. And it kind of dawned on me today in Stavanger that you can see the massive cruise ships in, and there seems to be a lot of the, the staff, the deck staff, tend to be um, South American, Filipinos, um, so I, I think a lot of them tend to set up home here. Um, so it's, it's a real thriving place. It looks like there's a real good nightlife. A lot of bars I've seen about the place. A lot of karaoke, worryingly enough. But uh, yeah, it's a cracking city. It's a really, really nice city. And um, I think you could you could do worse than making this place home. I'm really impressed with Norway so far. Really impressed. I loved Oslo. And uh, yeah, Stavanger's cracking. I'm going to spend the next week to 10 days, maybe even two weeks, heading up to North Castle. 
uh, heading right up the west coast. So I'll be right out in the wilds there. Should be seeing some beautiful scenery, some cracking roads, and a lot of wild camping. So uh, yeah, I could be looking quite rugged over the next few minutes. Anyway, we'll go and pick the bike up. Morning folks. Um, still heading up to Bergen, up the west coast. The place is incredible. You've got to come here. You have to come to Norway just to see this place. Incredible. Put Scotland, Iceland, everywhere like that together and uh, wow, this place is just stunning. And I've only just started. I can't wait. Um, quick chat about the tyres. These are the new sports touring tyres. Bridgestone Battle Axe uh, T30s, T30s. They are the supersede, they supersede the old Battle Axe 23, which I used on the last trip. Used them extensively all last year. Personally, I thought they were fantastic. One of the best tyres I've ever used. And I'm not just saying that because Bridgestone have given, me for, uh, given them to me for nothing. If I had to use my own money, I'd have bought those tyres. And I still would buy those tyres, the 23s. I've had the T30s on for two weeks now, I've done about four and a half thousand miles on them. Um, the dry grip, excellent, every bit as good as the 23. Uh, I think the handling is actually even sharper to be honest with you, It's even, it feels even more like the bike's on a, a razor's edge, it's pinpoint accuracy, it's good, it's a lot of fun, for, at my level anyway. Um, up in Scotland they got a damn good test, I mean the boys that came with me up to John O'Groats, it says in the blog, one word sums that run up. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so they got a th sound thrashing in the wet uh, and in the dry actually. It was a real mix of conditions and I've got to say they were fantastic. They kept up with the, the boys on um, you know some of the more race orientated tyres. Um, there was one day in torrential downpour where I had a little bit of an issue, a little bit of movement on the back, but everybody did to be honest with you. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a obscene amount, it was just a little bit of lack of grip and to be honest I just don't think we could get the tyres warm enough for them to get the grip going. It hadn't stopped raining up until about oh, Germany actually, so a good 10-11 days in the rain and I've got to say I had no issues. Um, tyres, great, it's uh, every bit as good as the, the 23 so far. Mileage wise, like I said, I've done about 4,500 miles and the garage yesterday said that they would normally fail them in Norway, but you know, as you can see, there's still plenty of tread on there, they've squared off quite a lot, but um, I've done a lot of, of motorway mileage, I've not done much uh, power acceleration or fast ride or anything like that since Scotland to be honest with you. Uh, they have squared off, but the 23 squared off quite a bit, and it only takes you know a couple a day's action in the twisties, and they round off again. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with the T30 so far, to be honest with you. Um, got a lot of miles ahead of us, and um, they'll get a sound good testing. I'll tell you that, and you'll get my honest view on them. All right, guys, uh, on the road. Crossing um, all the islands on the west of Norway, there's umpteen of these ferries that you have to, to get. And uh, you know, you just rock up basically, join the queue and uh, wait for the boat to turn up. But in the grand scheme of things, it's no hardship, is it? I wanna leave my blues behind. I've been talking to the people and the side of life. I've been talking to them about my life I wanna leave this world behind So on the eve, day 15 I found a cracking place to sleep in Brekkistranda dreaming of what lay ahead and Nordcap Well folks, we're here This is the Arctic Circle Raceway Funnily enough, in the Arctic Circle I keep saying this but can you get any better than that? <laughs> 